Ayurveda, a well-known science in India existing for more than 5000 years is unfortunately known to many few of us while the rest of the world is they're very interested to learn this and practice it and get full benefit of it. So why this gap? Probably there are a lot of misunderstanding and myth and misperception about Ayurveda or any traditional systems in India. In this video, I'm going to simplify Ayurveda so that we understand the basic of it so that we have some interest to adopt and practice in our day-to-day -day life. I am Sintal Kumar, Ayurveda and Varmam therapist, psychology counsellor and a well-being coach. In this video, I am going to help you understand the basics of Ayurveda which everybody should understand so that we can start adopting in, into our day-to-day -day life. If you see the word Ayurveda, so it has two parts, Ayur and Veda. Ayur means uh, life and Veda means science. So it's all about the life science and it's just not a medical system, it is purely a life science system. If you try to understand the definition of health defined by Ayurveda, it says a person is healthy only when his three doshas, that is the, the three important life forces, uh, seven dhatus, that is the tissue systems, agni, that is the digestive fire, and three excretions, that is three malas, if they are in equilibrium condition, and his mind and his five senses and his atma is in a blissful condition, then he can fulfill all his desires through this physical and mental health. That is when he is called as a healthy person. So that is a very clear definition of health as per Ayurveda. So it is not just uh, being uh, disease free is an important aspect in life. It is all about utilizing this good physical and mental faculty and go ahead and fulfill all your needs, wants and desire in life. Now let's try and understand this, the four major components that is uh, your uh, three doshas, seven dhatus, three malas and agni in little detail so that we get a better understanding. Let's try and understand Tridosha in little detail. Before Tridosha, needs, we need to understand about the Panchabhutas or the five elements. There is a saying in all our traditional practice, it's called Andatil Pindam, Pindatil Andam. That is, cosmic is atomic, atomic is cosmic, which means Everything in this universe, right? whether it is a human or even a planet or a plastic or a tree, plant, animal, anything you take, we are all nothing but a combination of these five elements. The proportion is different for each you know, body so that the function and the action is differing. Right? So it is nothing but a space, air, fire, water and earth, these five elements. Among these five, the space doesn't change much. Same as your earth they don't change much they're all mostly a static element what keeps changing a lot is your air fire and water because these are the most fluidic or the flexible thing and this influence a human or any other system we call it as a three dosha or the doshas now if you see there are three doshas vata pitta and kapha Vata is nothing but a combination of uh, space and air and Pitta is uh, fire and the water and Kapha is water and the earth. So this is called as a Tridosha. Now let's try and understand Vata in little detail. Vata as I mentioned, the, the dynamic factor is air. If you see the characteristics of air, air is always a wavery. It's very fast. It moves things from here to here. It's very subtle. It can dry anything on its way. Just giving the characteristics of an air. So, you will notice these characters in our physical and functional aspects. Like example, suppose when you have more or a good vata in the body, you are, you are more creative because vata is all about space and openness so you're more creative you're very artistic you're very enthusiastic you quickly learn things right that's a very good part of uh, vata same way in the body as i said it is a moving principle in the body 
So it will start moving your blood, uh, your urine, your stools, your nerve signals, menstrual cycles, everything works fine because it's a movement principle. And importantly, it keeps your uh, you know, knowledge, intellect very good. Now, if you notice, if this air is little imbalanced for various reasons because of food, environment, etc., etc. Now, certain functions get disturbed. Like example, as I said, it is a wavery movement. So, your thoughts get disturbed. So, you will think something good and again suddenly you will go back. So, basically your mind will not be stable. You will be keep moving around. You will be overthinking. You cannot focus on one thing. Same time, you will have very good concentration. You will remember something easily. Suddenly, you will start forgetting. Same way, your digestion will be good. Suddenly, it will drop. So, this is one you know, uh, cause or the problem it creates. <clears throat> As I mentioned, it is a very subtle uh, element. So, your sleep gets disturbed very often. Your digestion gets disturbed very often. And as I mentioned, it is also a dry function. So, uh, you will notice a lot of dryness in the body. Or uh, your, you may be constipating because it even dries the uh, stools. Sometimes skin you know, dryness happens. So, if you notice, this vata also plays a role in your mind. So, it creates fear, anxiety, insecure feeling, right? So, now you understand, a vata as, a, as an element can affect both physical as well as your mental faculty. Now, let's try and understand pitta. Pitta, you see, the maximum, the dominant uh, factor is fire. So, fire you can always link with the sun. If you see the characteristics of sun, sun is always like a center of everything. It's a leader. It's a leadership thing, right? It wants to control everything. It's very sharp. It's very penetrative. It's very energetic, right? And it's a lot of heat. Now, you see these characters in a human. So, when you have this kind of a character, you're very <coughs> charming person, charming personality, your leadership qualities are good. You want to control things, you want to dominate things, right? And <clears throat> you are to the point, when you speak, you are very to the point. And second, your body is very fit and healthy. You are more like a athletic personality, right? You have the fitness to do everything. Uh, same way in the, uh, the, the mental side, I said, no, you are getting a lot of leadership qualities and etc. Now, on the physical side, uh, it helps in transforming things in the body. The heat is all about transforming, correct? It makes uh, energy, like it helps in your metabolism, catabolism, uh, energy transformation from one form to another. So, all those good things happens when the fire isn't balanced in your body. Same time, if there is an imbalance of pitta or the fire in the body, it affects the physical aspect like you get more anger, you get more short temper or raising your voice, right? outburst, violent behaviors. These are all some of the mental faculties it affects. Similarly, on the physical side, it increases the heat in the body. So, when the heat is more in the body, your blood pressure shoots. And also, it starts creating skin-related issues, eye-related problems, right? So, that is the impact it creates in the body. Now, let's try and understand Kapha. Kapha, I said, it is a combination of water and earth, right? Uh, you can link this to something like a moon. I'm just for a comparison, we are connecting this to a moon. If you see moon, the characteristics of moon is very calm, quiet, very loving, caring, you know, very pleasant look. Same way, it is also very dull, dark and dense kind of a characters. Now, with kapha in the body or it is in a normal condition, the person will be very, very loving, caring, passionate, very methodological, very systematic, you know, determined to do things, all those good qualities. Physically also, if you notice, kapha helps in stabilizing things in the body, building things in the body, the so muscle, bones, very strong muscle bone. Obviously, it will put little uh, weight in the body. 
but stability is more important function of kapha now if suppose this uh, kapha is imbalanced you know what happens in the mental side it makes you little more possessive little greedy very adamant behavior not believing things easily not leaving things easily right uh, sometimes depressions worry sadness builds into the mind on the physical aspect if kapha is imbalanced immediate reflection is puts on weight you become little obese okay uh, more of a water related disease happens like uh, cough cold asthma bronchitis all those related to the water uh, disease starts dominating in the body so you understand right this is what is called as uh, tridosha or the vata pitta kapha theory right? now we are going to talk about uh, the agni or the digestive fire uh, we have almost like 13 uh, digestive fire because in our modern science we talk only about uh, a hydrochloric acid or enzymes in the stomach that helps in digestion uh, but as per ayurveda there is also an important concept called assimilation so which means the food which is digested has to get reach meaning it has to be converted into different forms so that each functions absorbs or each tissues absorbs the way they want it so there are 13 agnis the first agni is primarily to digest the food so it has to make it into a Uh, uh liquid form so that it can be absorbed then there is something called as the five agnis we call as the bhuta agni there are five elements we talked about so this food has to be converted into five different forms because we have your body is made out of five elements so each one needs a different format to absorb so there is a five agnis once this five agni is ready then i the, the assimilation process starts when i say assimilation it has to go to the seven the tissue system or seven dhatu systems in the body so there are seven dhatu agnis right so the the food has to be digested then it has to be converted for the five elements and then there is a seven fires required to go and push them or absorbed by the seven dhatus so most of the time our disease or illness happens when this assimilation process is not proper because this process happens in a little serial way we are going to talk about that when we you know discuss about dhatus if there is a break in between or if one of the seven uh, agni is not proper food gets stagnated there and it doesn't reach the end state of the the seven dhatus so that's all about uh, agni or uh, your digestive fire now let's try and understand this uh, dhatu concept so there are seven dhatus or basically a tissue system in the body as per ayurveda they play a vital role in building your physical strength the first one we called as a rasa or nothing but a plasma so when the food is digested the first thing it absorb is the key energies to uh, you know give your uh, fulfill your action requirements work nourishments and etc right so the plasma absorbs the first ingredients for its purpose then the food reaches the next level we call it as a rakta or the blood so the blood will absorb the ingredients required to build the white cells red cells and hemoglobin all those uh, important ingredients once that is done the food reaches the next level that is we called as a mamsa or the muscle so it helps you to build all the muscular strength in the body then the fourth level it reaches uh, meda or we call it as a fat so it helps you to build the fat system in the body fat is not bad right so it it say it helps you to protect as well as store the energy in the body right then it goes to the fifth level which is basically we called as a asti or uh, the bone so it helps in building the the uh, the it, it absorbs the nutrition to build a strong uh, the skeletal system then it reaches uh, the manja or uh, the bone marrow right so these are all the finest filtered energy and they are very key for storing your uh, bone marrow and the last one we call sukla or the reproductive systems energy because they are the finest energy so it has to go into the the last level and also there is one more we called as uh, the the ojas or the tejas which is basically subtle energy once the finest energy helps you to build your 
uh, soul. So we don't talk about that, but we majorly cover the seven physical uh, datus, right? In addition, they also, as I mentioned, they all go in a serial fashion. So the food has to first get absorbed by the rasa, rakta, mamsa. It goes into that flow. In that process, they also create certain sub datus, as well as they also create a, a waste product. Okay. So we are going to understand them more detail because they are the key uh, concepts to treat and uh, you know, uh, cure some of the diseases. So, but first uh, major uh, understanding is we need to know that there are seven datus through which your body starts absorbing all the nutrition. We are going to talk about the mala, uh, three malas or we call it as uh, excretion process in the body. Uh, the first one is obviously the uh, the feces that is uh, uh, digestive waste which is uh, from the food they have to pass through your uh, stools through anus that is a major uh, waste. Then we have the second waste which is urination because any liquid form of waste they get converted and then they pass through the urine that is the second one. Third important is your sweat. So certain waste which is not very major but it has to be often released and it is not very toxic or uh, you know uh, it's a, still a good part of a waste right. They try to come through your uh, skin so that is through the sweat. So when your two systems that is your urine and your uh, feces uh, excretion is not proper sometime the body starts sending the waste through your skins that is when your sweat becomes a uh, little smelly and you, you see uh, you know, acne, pimple, rashes, they are all coming because your other two systems are not good. So a sweat is a sign of your uh, health. Also it is a sign of how your digestive system is working in your body. So we are going to talk all this thing in detail but this is just a small brief about the three malas. I know you have a fair idea about what is this uh, concepts of tridoshas datus, malas and agni, right? So fairly, I am trying to explain in a very simple form. Now, when you go to the next levels of understanding Ayurveda, you will understand how these four things major may, plays a major role in uh, treating your uh, illness as well as maintaining your body for your uh, very good uh, physical health and mental health. So watch out more such videos in Life to Live Wellness channel. Thank you.